Good morning everyone. Today we will learn about the law of demand. In the previous class we have learned the concept of demand and what are the determinants of demand. Now we are going to learn what is the law of demand. Law of demand is a behavioral fact. How it is behavioral? Because how we behave in response to price is actually covered by the law of demand. It is our behavior in response to changes in price. Now, how we behave? Normally, when we purchase something, when we demand something, what we look? We look at the price. How its price is changing. If its price is at a lower level or its price falls, then we tend to increase its demand. We purchase more and more of that good. When its price increases, we purchase less and less of that good. So, the law of demand states or explains this relationship between price and quantity demanded of a commodity. According to this law, other things being equal. Here, other things imply other factors except its price, which determine demand. Now, the law states that other things being equal, price of a commodity and its quantity demanded move in the opposite direction. Thus, when price falls, quantity increases, that is quantity demanded increases and when price increases, quantity demanded falls. Now, this law holds only on certain assumptions. What are those assumptions? Those assumptions are, number one, there should not be any change in the price of related goods. In the previous class, we have learned that apart from the own price of a commodity, there are some other factors which determine demand. Now, here the assumption of the law includes those factors. Now, the first assumption is there should not be any change in the price of related goods. The second assumption is income of the consumer should not change. Then, tastes and preferences of the consumers also should not change in order to maintain this law. And the consumer also should not have any future expectations. That is, the consumer should not expect that the price of that commodity will fall in future or it will rise in future. If these assumptions are not maintained, then the law of demand will not hold. So, first these assumptions are to be maintained and then given these assumptions, human behavior uh, acts like that, human acts like that, when price of a good falls, the demand for that good increases and when price of a good increases, its demand falls. Now, when we plot this behavior in a table, it is called demand schedule and this demand schedule shows the uh, combination of price and quantity demanded. Here we can see in the demand schedule that when price of a particular commodity is 10, uh, suppose it is rupees 10 in our India, then the consumer concerned uh, demanded 2 units of the good. When its price falls to 8, demand increases to 4. Then when its price further falls to rupees 6, its demand further increases to 6 units. And again, when price further falls to rupees 4, its demand again increases to 8 units. Thus, when price is falling, quantity demanded is increasing. And this behavior if we plot in a figure or uh, if we uh, um, express this in a diagrammatic form, we get the demand curve. Now, what the demand curve does? 
the demand curve shows the different combinations of price and quantity demanded at each and every point of the demand curve there is a combination for example here we can see that when uh, price is rupees 10 in the vertical axis we are measuring price and in the horizontal axis we are measuring quantity demanded now when the price is rupees 10 how much was our quantity it was rupees uh, it was 2 units then as price goes on in uh, falling quantity demanded goes on increasing in this way when quantity demanded uh, goes on increasing we see that the price is falling and here we have plotted the price at rupees 6 where quantity demanded has increased to 6 units and further as we go downwards from left to right along the demand curve we see that price is for falling and quantity demanded is increasing so this law of demand and its plotting in the demand curve and demand schedule gives us an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded but what we have to remember that we always have to remember that in order to be uh, in order to hold the law of demand our assumptions must always be maintained if our assumptions are not maintained then what will happen the law of demand will not hold how what happens when uh, other factors that is related uh, price of related goods income of the consumer taste and preferences of the consumer and then future expectations when these factors change it will have its impact on the demand now how suppose uh, let us uh, assume that the price and quantity of the commodity which we are discussing here is T. Now, if you do not like T, rather you like coffee. So, what will happen? When price of T falls, you need not always increase your demand. Why? Because you do not like T. So, in that case, if your taste has changed, Earlier you used to uh, consume tea but now you do not like tea anymore. So even if the price of tea is falling, in, uh, quantity demanded of tea may not increase from your side. So these things impact our law of demand. Similarly, when uh, income of a consumer increases, suppose earlier a person uh, who consume, uh, consumed 50 units of, of uh, good uh, and had an income of 500 rupees. So with that income, he could only purchase 50 units of that good. Now, if his income increased, if his income increases to uh, suppose rupees 1000, so he has 500 rupees extra in his wallet now. And in that case, even if there is a slight increase in price of the commodity, he will not mind purchasing some more extra units. Why? Because he has now extra income. So in this way, our assumptions always should have to be maintained in order to get or in order to observe this inverse relationship between price of a commodity and its quantity demanded. So uh, today we will stop here and the next class we'll learn some further topics related to the demand thank you very much